Well, good morning, everyone. I sure missed you guys. It's good to see y'all. Praise the Lord. I'm trying to decide if we're going to stand or not. Uh, why don't we just hang out today? Why don't we relax? You know, the reason we do this is because you just kind of think about, like, like I don't know how many of you went to a, a home Bible study, you know, and usually you're all sitting around and some people are sitting on the floor. Yeah. It wouldn't be me. Um, but you're all sitting on the floor, couches, chairs, and somebody, we're, they say, okay, man, let's do this Bible study. And they say, yeah, cool. And then someone has a guitar and they pull it out and start worshiping the Lord. That's kind of the vibe I'm looking for. Greg, me and Pastor Greg are looking for. We're looking for a, just, to, just to lay back and enjoy the Lord, the presence of the Lord. Amen? Amen. So let's pray and then we'll get started. So Lord, thank you for this beautiful day and just... We are blown away by your grace and your majesty and how beautiful the days have been. And we thank you for what you do and how you keep us throughout life's journey. You are truly a wonderful God and we praise you. So anoint, anoint us this morning as we, we enjoy your presence. Your word says where two or three are gathered together in your name, Lord, you are here. So we thank you for your presence even right now. We love you. We glorify you. And... We just pray that you would anoint Pastor Greg and anoint our ears also. Anoint those in Facebook land. We love you, Father. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. 
everlasting God, the everlasting God. Calvary Chapel. How's everybody doing? Man. I love it. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, right? Amen. Blessed. See some familiar faces back with us. That's awesome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And those of you joining from the house via internet. Uh, we welcome you. Hope you're having a blessed morning as well. And uh, hope you enjoy the service. Get into some word. Amen. Friendly reminder. Amen. Cell phones, please. If you have not done so, please take this opportunity now to silence your phones. Amen. We highly appreciate that. Amen. Amen. All right. Unless you're expecting a call from Jesus, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll all get that. Then, yeah, we'll, <laughs> we understand. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> hey, uh, we'll get right into our uh, announcements now after all the fun. <laughs> hey, uh, just a reminder, leadership meeting after second service, shortly after second. So those of you in leadership, we will see you there. Uh, Stout-hearted men and women ministries will be getting back into action tomorrow evening, 6 30 here in the sanctuary for men's and in the foyer for the women's correct all right so uh back in action amen agape way uh friday the 14th uh coming up june and then the next one will be june 28th as well it starts at 7 p.m uh is there sign ups dan danny do you know no it's just come as you are okay awesome uh blessed and be blessed food ministry june 21st uh, again, in the bulletins, as it says, or re request, please call or text, get yourself an appointment. Um, it just makes things flow so much easier. Amen. Prayer meeting, Saturday, June 22nd, here in the sanctuary. Starts at 9 a.m., roughly ends at 10, 10 a.m. So, uh, again, as we always say, bring your prayers, lay them at the Lord's feet, and, and let him do what he does. Amen. Our hope. Hiking with our brother Thomas. All right. How's that going, Thomas? Good, good. All right. So, hey, sign-ups for this are in the lobby. So if you're interested in that, there's a clipboard. Again, if you have trouble locating these uh, clipboards, you just let me know, and I will point them out to you. Amen? Prayer at Harupa Valley, Valley Sheriff Station. Uh, it's 9 to 9.30 by the flagpole. And, again, if you're available for that, it would be great to have you there praying for those brave individuals. Amen. Music ministry, looking for a bass player, yeah? All right, so if you're talented, have that talent. Talk with our brother Sam and uh, see what we can do. Amen? Not that you guys, you know, you guys are doing a great job, man. <laughs> Amen. Security, always looking for help, right? So uh, get with myself if you're interested, and uh, we'll talk it over and uh, you know, see about getting you plugged in. Amen? And uh, children and youth are always looking for helpers and teachers as well. So uh, Rosa, or Rosanna, I'm sorry. I think she's in the, yeah. Uh, if you have trouble locating her, get with myself as well, and I will help you find her and uh, talk it over. Amen? Amen? Shall we pray? Oh, heavenly gracious Father, we thank you for this morning, dear Lord. Thank you for the opportunity to be here, to worship you, to glorify you, dear Lord. Oh, just to be in your presence, dear Lord. What a beautiful day. We just thank you so much for your love, your kindness, your blessings. Oh, we ask that you bless the, the worship, the fellowship, Pastor Greg as he delivers the message. Oh, and most of all, we just hope, 
hope that and pray that you bless this day. We thank you. We love you. And all God's children say, yeah. amen. Have a blessed morning. Thank you. grace and your mercy and your love lord and thank you again for all you do and we love you in jesus name good morning again i know some of you are thinking ah, i didn't see this guy forever and now i've seen him all morning so <laughs> there you go i'm like a re never mind um why don't we stand for the reading of god's word yeah. this morning we're going to be in S psalm 8 for those of you that have the, King, the New King James, that's what we'll be reading, or you can follow on the, on the screens. I'll, I'll say the odd verses and you say the even. O Lord, O Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. When I considered your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained. What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have created, crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hand. You have put all things under his feet. All sheep and ox, and even the beasts of the field. The birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, ask who has the sea. And all together. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Amen. Please be seated. Praise the Lord. It's good to be here. Amen. Wow, what a blessing. Can you believe it? We're already in June. I mean, I, I saw Connie starting to inventory the Thanksgiving wear the other day, you know what I mean? Because before you know it, you know, we're going to be sitting down to Thanksgiving dinner, right? My goodness. You know, the, the days just click off faster and faster, don't they? You know, I, I remember when I was in the fourth grade and we were finishing up finally, you know, just, you know, our, our school year. And I remember my teacher sort of speaking to herself as she was cleaning out her desk and we're all, you know, preparing uh, to close down for the summer. And she said, boy, this year went by fast. And, and as a fourth grader, I said, fast? This is the longest nine months of my life. Fast. And now I, I, I totally understand what Mrs. Cochran was talking about. Man, this year went by fast. Wow. So praise the Lord. I mean, so let's, let's allow the Lord to find us with our knees on the ground and our nose in the book. Amen? Amen. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise God. Let's, let's hold them high. I believe that this is the that's word. I believe that in the volume of this book speaks about my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. I desire not only to read it, and to know it, but through the power of God's Holy Spirit to live it. Amen. Yay. Second Peter. Second Peter. Chapter 2 this morning. As you make your way there. So head back to the back of the book. Second Peter. As you're turning, as we're turning to, to 2 Peter, uh, a quick reminder. Last time, Peter made it clear that Scripture came from holy men that were moved by God the Holy Spirit. So we human beings are vessels of God's desire. Now, he doesn't need us, but he wants us. He wants us us to join him. He wants to share in what it is that he's doing. And so that's great. I mean, what a loving God. I mean, we couldn't invent God. You know, the little gods that we invent, they demand and they, they want. And they say, I want this, I want that, I want the other thing. But our God says, hey, come alongside. Join me. Oh, and buckle up because it's going to be a crazy ride in a good way. 
And so we understand that as walking with the Lord all these time, all these years. So, we, so Peter has made it very clear, hey, Scripture has come from holy men that were moved by God the Holy Spirit. And interpretation is not just for, for an individual. Scripture interpretation is qualified by spirit-filled men. And so Peter made that very clear to us uh, last time. And so on the flip side, this morning, Peter is going to allow us to recognize that there are false teachers. And false teachers bring destructive doctrine. That's what false teachers do. And so Peter is, is addressing the congregation, if you will, saying, be very aware. Don't take this lightly. So, Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for your goodness. And once again, as Sam had prayed for us previously, prepare our hearts, Lord, for what it is that you have for us. And then give us the boldness, Lord, to apply these things, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So even though God spoke to holy men in verse 1, chapter, chapter 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, there were also false prophets. There were. So Peter is referencing back to the Old Testament times. There were also false prophets. And Peter is going to call one out by name in verse 15, Balaam. But Peter goes on to say, There were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you. So there were false per teachers and there will be false teachers. So nothing's new under the sun, Peter is saying. There's always, always has been, and always will be false teachers among you. So you eldership, you need to have your eyes peeled and your ears opened. You need to be listening to the kind of conversation that is going on in the hallway. And believe me, being here at Calvary Chapel, Harupa Valley, for some 30 years, I've heard a lot of things going on, a lot of chatter going on. A lot of things, a lot of people saying, well, you know, we're just going to start a, a home Bible study, and I'm not going to say anything to, to the eldership because they know they're wrong. Happens a lot. People wanting to do things, not wanting, wanting to fly under the radar and, and things like that. We've had church splits because people have taken the body that, that God brought here to Calvary Chapel. We've had church splits where, where people are just saying, you know what, I, I've got a better way, so follow me. So, you know, if you have a better way, go establish a church across the street or whatever, but leave the, the sheep, the lambs alone. God frowns down on, the, and that, on that sort of thing. If God has a work through you, I mean, confirm it uh, through myself, or, or our elder Sam or whatnot. Man, we'd be glad to lay hands on you, pray for you, wish for God's best. But why is it that so many times things happen undercover? Because they're not supposed to be happening. That's why. And so Peter is saying and reminding all of us, hey, there were and there will be false teachers. It's not going to stop. So don't be stunned when this revelation comes up. And don't be critical of the leadership, the local leadership that says, hey, we're going to move away from this person or we're going to cut this person loose. A lot of times we want to go and run and defend that person. Don't, be very careful. I mean, you're welcome to do that, but I'm telling you, be very careful. Peter's telling us, be careful. Be careful. It's not going to end up well. Most of the time, it's not going to end up well for you. And it's the flock that, that I'm concerned about. I'm not so concerned about these deceitful teachers. I mean, I'm concerned. Don't you know, keep me in context. But I'm more concerned about the lambs. That's what makes me mad, and that's what... Peter is going to tell us today that God is not happy. 
with this sort of activity. He does not justify it. He will not. He does not and will not. And so Peter is speaking to all of us today. So there were and there will be false teachers among you who will secretly, here's the key, secretly, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them, and bring on themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways, how sad, because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. By covetousness, these false teachers will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time, see the Lord is a good record keeper, for a long time their judgment has not been idle. God is a good scorekeeper. He doesn't forget, but he, do, he doesn't need us to help him. But he wants us to be vigilant and listening and, and watching. But for a long time, their judgment has not been idle. And their destruction does not slumber. Man, that is a horrifying thought to me. That's a chilling thought. That God is keeping a record. Oh, man, that awakens me. Man. I mean, I'm still to keep an eye on the door, and I'm still to keep my ears open, but I know that the Lord has got the record. He's got the scorecard. Man, and that is a chilling thought to me. For, for, our, for our friends, for people that, that are born again, but yet have gone off, they came into leadership, they kind of lost their minds, and they've gone off the track. And God is saying, oh, don't worry, you know, I, I've, got the, I've got this. Now, some will, will, find, will realize, and God the Holy Spirit will, will allow them to repent. But there's others that keep going further and further away from the Lord, and eventually maybe they, just, they're gonna, they, they might reject their salvation. I know that's a, a whole different subject, but Peter is, is recognizing here, allowing us to recognize there are people that are coming in with deceitful conversation, and you need to be very aware of it. In fact, you need to shut it down. And so concerning these, these purely decept, de, deceitful teachers, for, verse 4, For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of dark, darkness to be reserved for judgment. And we've got to take a minute here. Uh, the, and, and Peter is saying, saying that, that God did not spare the angels Perhaps, perhaps a reference to Genesis chapter 6. I'll let you review that. But it's perhaps a, a reference to the, uh, the angelic beings in chapter 6. But he, he, the Lord cast those fallen angels into hell. And an interesting definition of this very loose word we use, hell, which is fine. But Peter, in the Greek, Peter is saying the Lord did not spare these angels that these fallen angels, but cast them down to hell. And the definition of this usage of hell here, uh, if you, and, uh, the level of this, uh, is the lowest and most horrible level of hell. In fact, that level of hell is, in the Greek, identified as Tartarus. And so Peter is saying here, yeah, hey, if, in other words, since, the Lord has cast these angels who've sinned, cast them into Tartarus. Is he going to hesitate to cast any other deceitful practices? Cast these bringers of blasphemy? Is he going to hesitate to cast those into hell likewise? And one of the things that we have a hard time with, with our brains, and we are fallen people, we're people that have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. If you have Jesus Christ today, praise the Lord. If you don't have Jesus today, today's the perfect day for you to receive Christ. Amen. Today's the day. So what a joy. I'm happy that we're all here. But for you and I, as born-again believers, you know, we have a hard time in our, broken, our brokenness. I mean, again, we're redeemed by the Lord, but in our brokenness, and our incapability of understanding, get me now, our incapability of understanding 
how, what holiness means and how God is holy in our broken understanding, we say to ourselves, well, how can a loving God cast someone down into hell for eternity? It's simply, we don't get it because we simply don't get the idea of holiness. We just don't. We don't. We have a, a bit of an understanding of it. But the first time that we're really going to understand God's holiness, the very, very first time, is the day and the moment we go into the presence of God and we drop to our face and just say, wow, I never understood holiness and now I get it. We will never be able to get it while we're in this broken body, ever. And so with our broken body, we have that broken thinking say, saying, gee, how can a God of love cast someone into hell forever? Because he's holy. And we don't understand holiness. We just don't. We're incapable of understanding his holiness. That's the problem. So then when we start allowing our thinking to run around, which, you know, of course we do, we start thinking, well, wow, you know, we start making excuses for the Lord, or we start blaming the Lord. Well, how could you do that? Well, the answer is always the same, because I'm holy. That's why. You, you know, I desire that you be holy. I don't want you to, I don't want to cast you out. I, I want you to be holy as I am holy so we can commune together. But we, again, we don't get, we can't get it. We're incapable of understanding the holiness of God. And so these deceptive teachers, they have no clue, not one. They've not spent any time con uh, concentrating on God's holiness. That, that's the problem. And so when I see people wanting to wander off or wanting to steal sheep, we, we call them sheep rustlers. So when the sheep rustlers come around and they begin to do their thing, I realize this person is not concentrating on God's holiness. This is not God's plan, friend, for you. Oh, how, do you, you know, how dare you, all this sort of thing. This is not God's plan. No, he called me to be a sheep rustler. You know, rest assured. You know, that's the kind of conversation that goes on. And so Peter is saying, hey, since God didn't spare the angelic being, is he going to spare a human being? No, he's not. Peter is saying, saying no, God's not going to overlook this. Kind of wink his eye and say, okay, yeah, all right. you're a good Bible presenter, so I'll let it go. That's not what he's saying. That's not what Peter is saying here. Hey, there's people with destructive conversation, and I'm keeping a good scorecard. Man, this is scary stuff. Secondly, in verse 5, Peter goes on. So, so Peter says, hey, God didn't spare the angels. Secondly, in verse 5, he did not spare the ancient world prior to the flood. God said, Noah, you're my guy and your, your family. You're my guy. But other than that, the rest are going. Peter's saying, so, so God did not spare the ancient world. He saved Noah, one of eight. Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and yet God brought in the flood on the world of the ungodly. So God's not sparing these false teachers, the ungodly. And additionally, in verse 6, the, he, he turned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes. Into ashes. He, con he condemned them to destruction, and he, and he did this making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly. So there's no excuse. We have God's word. Peter being moved by God the Holy Spirit writing God's mind. Peter, you write this. And this will be as an example to study the Word. That's why we study the Word continually. We're never going to close the Bible and say, okay, I got it. Never going to happen. We're going to say, well, I just finished the book of Revelation. Well, now what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to go back to Genesis and start back through again. That's what we say. We're never done. 
So these are examples for those who afterward entertain the idea of living ungodly. Hey, should I live ungodly? Yeah, I think I should. And all of a sudden, oh, whoa, wait, wait a minute. I just read in Scripture, I better not live that way. Because God keeps an excellent scorecard. This is chilling stuff. I've had to wrestle with this all week long. My goodness. From Sodom and Gomorrah, the Lord delivered righteous Lot. Lot, who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among the ungodly had, his, had himself tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. It seems to us, especially the first time we ever read 2 Peter chapter 2 here, and we read about righteous lot that seemed to be an oxymoron, didn't it? We, we all, the first, I guarantee all of us that read 2 Peter chapter 2 for the first time and, said, and it, it read about righteous lot, I guarantee all of us snapped our head back and said, righteous lot? I guarantee that's what we said to ourselves, all of us. I mean, we knew, you know, Lot is a, is a, is a loser, man, a real bum, you know, a, a heister, you know, a, you know, a guy that was ungodly. But here the Lord, again, keeping great records, a righteous Lot, he had a righteous soul, but he was tempted. And he was a little bitty lamb, and he was taken away by the activity of Sodom and Gomorrah. And so we've got to be very careful what sort of influence or what are we pouring into people. We all have a, 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 an opportunity to pour into one another. And we have had people come and wanting to hijack this fellowship. And other than the grace of God, this fellowship should, could have easily been shut down numerous times because of deceitful people. When I first got to this fellowship some 30 years ago, this, there was a major split that just happened. Who was that split conducted by? The assistant pastor. When Pastor Jim was in the hospital with a liver that was going bad, he was in for a liver transplant, he was completely out of the loop for months. When I came to this fellowship the first time we were over on Etiwanda, I didn't even know who Pastor Jim was because I, hadn't, I was a new guy and I hadn't seen him. I came every Wednesday night and there's this nice guy, Bob Probert. And Bob Probert was, was doing all the teaching at the time. He committed. He said, Jim, I'm, I've got your back. Your assistant pastor has stabbed you in the back. And yes, I will cover for you, Jim. I mean, Bob Probert and, and pa my pastor Jim, you know, they were buddies for the longest time. And Bob said, I'll step in. And so I'm coming to Calvary Chapel at the time, Mira Loma, for months and months and months, and I'm thinking, this is the pastor. And then one day I came in on a Sunday, and there's this different guy, totally different personality, and I, and I said to someone, who's this guy? He said, he's the pastor of the church. He's the founder and the pastor of the church. I said, well, where where'd that other nice Santa Clausy looking guy go? He's gone. This is our guy, Pastor Jim D'Alessandro. I was like, okay. Sheep rustlers. And that's what happened with this fellowship. When I first got here, I saw the condition of this church. It was completely split because of the nonsense the assistant pastor was pouring in to people that didn't know any better. Destroy almost technically. I mean, he, he wanted, I guess, he wanted to des destroy it, but the Lord didn't allow that to happen. And so, I, you know, I, I've got 30 years, I, I've collected a lot of stories, <laughs> observed a lot of things. And this church should have been shut down many, many times because of the evil deeds of men, but the Lord said, No, this is my church, and it's not going anywhere and there's been many many different attempts of people coming sheep rustling many times four maybe five times perhaps and none of them have been good and so I'm very cautious when someone says hey we want to do this or that I got to know who this person is 
This person better have been with me for a long time. You know, if Sam comes up and says, hey, I want to have a Bible study at the house, I say, man, go for it. But we've had people just walk into this door as recently as a year ago and saying, hey, you know, we're here, you know, uh, we're here to bless and, you know, we want to open a Bible study. And, and, and Sam and I, we, we stood and we said, no way. No. Don't know who you are. Don't know what's on your mind. Told them no. That person isn't here today. They left within three months. They were gone. Gone. Because we've learned now how to observe and discern who's doing what. I mean, I give all the credit to the Lord, but through those experiences, some scary experiences where I'm thinking, are we going to make it through this one? I've learned. I've learned. And so Lot was drawn away by the lawless deeds that he exposed himself to. He, he made some poor choices. Lot went and lived in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Big time mistake. But yet the Lord knew Lot. Lot is a righteous man, but he's being influenced by destructive heresies. So the Lord had to finally just reach in and said, Lot, you're out of here. You're too immature to change your life on your own. So I'm going to make a miraculous intervention, and I'm going to save you. I'm even going to save your wife, but you know what? She's going to turn back. But Lot, you're going to make it by my mighty hand. Wow, spooky stuff. And so since the Lord is able, he was able to save Noah, he was able to save Lot, verse 9, then rest assured the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations, and yet on the flip side, he knows how to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. And especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise authority. Those are being reserved for judgment. Don't let anybody get away with saying, man, I want to go to hell and party up with my brothers, man. Hell is a horrific place and we need to have the fear and the understanding of what hell is. If you don't have Jesus Christ today and you die today, you're going to hell. You're going to hell, a place of torment. And we need to recognize that. Hell is not where we desire anyone to go. The Lord doesn't desire anyone to go to hell, but He will send, He will allow you to send yourself to hell. Because his directives are right and they're holy. And if we reject them, the only thing that's left for us is eternal torment. Eternal. Not for a hundred years, not for a thousand years, forever. You do not want to die without Jesus Christ and end up in hell. You don't want to do that. And that's what we recognize and understand. And so the Lord keeping his scorecard, he says, hey, I reserve the unjust for the day of judgment. These ungodly are presumptuous and self-willed. They're not God, they're not willed to do my desires, the Lord's saying. These folks, these ungodly are are presumptuous and self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries. Now again, we don't have the capacity in our broken bodies, our broken minds to realize we forget all the time that all authority has been ordained by God the Father himself. All authority. And the Lord, and Peter is saying through the Lord's direction, these folks are presumptuous, in other words, saying, gee, you know, that, that bum in office, he ought to get out. You know, that guy, he's no good. I, I say we start a riot or something, get him out. Or I, I pray that somebody, you know, he might find an assassin's bullet or something. These are people that are not thinking. The Lord is saying, hey, you're presumptuous. You're thinking your way is better than mine. Now, I'll tell you, I'll, you know, I have to admit, 
I'm not a real fan of our president, okay? Shocking, right? I'm not a real fan of him because I just came from the gas pump, okay? Yeah, I'm a surface guy. You know, I just came from the grocery store. So I'm not a big fan of someone saying that, hey, you know, if you think you're a girl, then, hey, you, we'll pay for your sex change. I'm not a real big fan of that, okay? But I, understand, I also recognize, Lord, I went to the poll and I voted the way you directed me so I did my job. And then, Lord, when I left that poll, I said, Lord, let your will be done. And I accept it. I don't have to like it so much. Most of all, I don't have to, I, I can't understand it because I don't have the capability of understanding God's ways. My ways are not God's ways. And so I reserve, I humble myself. I say, Lord, you know what you're doing. And so therefore, I'm not presumptuous. I am not self-willed. Now, once in a while, I'll catch myself. And I'll say, Lord, forgive me. You know what you're doing. You have our governor in office for a reason. Well, there's a lot of people, a lot of acquaintances, a lot of friends of mine that have left California because of the governor of California. I'm not happy about that. But I know God has the perfect plan. So I, I submit to that. I don't like having my friends and loved ones leaving California. I don't like that. But I accept it because it's God's will. And so here, the, the, Peter is saying under the, Holy, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, they speak evil of dignitaries. They forget that all leadership, all dignitaries are ordained by the Lord. So we've got to just come back, Lord, I don't understand, but yet, Lord, your will be done. And here, Peter is saying, these folks, these ungodly, don't have that, that thinking. They just say, boy, if I was in charge, this is the way I'd do it. And my way is better. My way is best. And so Peter is saying, hey, God has your number. Not good, man. Not good at all. Not good at all. Chilling. And in verse 11, on the contrary, in verse 11, whereas angels who are greater in power and might, greater than the, the everyday human being, they do not bring a reviling accusation against these ungodly before the Lord. They don't make any presumptuous conversation with the Lord. They know better. Because these, these angelic beings, beings, they're in the presence of the Lord all the time, so they recognize holiness right off the bat. And so they recognize because God is holy, His way is paramount. His way is supreme. And so here Peter is putting it in context, hey, even the angels, not even the angels bring a reviling accusation. But yet these self-willed, presumptuous people, they blabber off all the time. Totally against the, the will of the Lord. It's not a conversation with the Lord, it's a, it's a directive, hey Lord, this is what has to happen. And Peter is saying, not good. And of course, most of the time, the Lord's the idea of the Lord's not even in their thinking. So even the, neither the angels bring a reviling accusation. Verse 12, but these evil doers, they are like natural brute beasts made to be caught and destroyed. They speak evil of the things they do not understand and will utterly perish in their own corruption and will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who count it pleasure to carouse in the daytime. These are folks that completely disregard counsel. And believe me, I have counseled many people that I've given the word of God. I said, this is what the Lord wants you to do. And many people have gotten up from our meeting, walked out the door, and I've never seen them again. And in fact, they've engaged in the things that they've asked. Hey, I want to do this. I say, it's not your time. This is not God's will. This is not the way to do it. And they said, oh, okay, great, fine and dandy. Walked out the door and went ahead with their program. I, I'm just, I'm stunned. Wow. That's going to be tough to justify. Not that they've lost their salvation, you know, in these, in these characters that I'm talking about, these scenarios that I'm talking about. Not that they've lost their salvation, but how are they going to justify what they've done? 
Well, it's not going to be justified. Unless I come back and repent. I've had one guy in 30 years repent. He, he came to me, and, and I was just so thrilled about it. I had no idea. This is a guy that, that uh, for 20 years I just couldn't get along with because of what he did. I couldn't get along. I mean, I, I, Lord, help me. I just I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. And one time at a music event, he was the keyboard player there. At a music event, I think Sam was even there. But at a music event, he came up to me as we were setting up. And he said, Pastor, I apologize for what I did. I was wrong. And man, I didn't see that coming. I just thought, well, I'm just going to have to ignore this guy. I've got to play music with him. And that was my attitude. But he came and he said, man, I apologize. I, I hope you forgive me. And you know what? That instant, instantaneously, I had a love for this guy. Instantly. I didn't have to work it up or pray about it. Instantly, it was just God's words just speaking to me. You know, through his words, you know, forgive this guy. And I was like, man. Thank you, Lord. And we just played music that night and had a great night. It was wonderful. It's the one and only person that has stabbed me in the back and came back and said, I was wrong. And instantly it was gone. I love that brother, man. And this is a guy I got along with famously. This is very early in my, my ministry. Very early. I've always been challenged in my ministry. It's, it's funny to me. But he challenged me very early, but then again, 20 years later, he came and said, man, I'm sorry. And man, I hugged that guy like I've never hugged anybody in my life. I was so grateful. And so I'm blessed. Grateful. Wonderful. But these people, these ungodly people that come in deceitfully, they are spots and blemishes carousing in their own deceptions. They've deceived themselves. While they, and they feast with you. They have, they have eyes full of adultery, and they cannot cease from sin, enticing unstable souls. Sheep rustling. Hey, come with us, man. This is what, I'm, this is what we're going to do. Hey, it's going to be great. You're going to be a part of it. You're going to be on the ground floor of it. Come on, come on with us. You know, come with us. I got a position for you. And so the, the Lord is saying here, hey, these are people enticing unstable souls. They have a heart. These ungodly people have a heart trained in covetous practices. Did you catch that? Their heart is trained for covetous practices, and they are accursed children. They're accursed. Man, this is chilling. These are chilling thoughts of the Lord. Their hearts are trained in covetous practices, and they are accursed children. They have forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam, as mentioned earlier. They follow the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who, and Balaam loved the wages of unrighteousness. But he was rebuked for his iniquity, a dumb donkey speaking with a man's voice restrained the madness of the prophet. Now, reference Balaam in Numbers chapter 22. Take your time, you know, this weekend, this week, whatever. But reference Balaam in Numbers 22. And Balaam was enticed by finances, big money. The king of Moab said, hey, Balaam, I know you're a man of God, and I know you're a guy that represents the nation of Israel, but frankly, we are scared to death of the nation of Israel, so I, I need them to be cursed. And here, Balak... The king of Moab said, oh, certainly, you know, every man's got his price. That's what the king of Moab said. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to entice this guy, this prophet of God, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to entice him with tons of finances, and he will come and curse Israel. I just know he will, because every man has their price. I mean, and, you know, and really, as I think about it, and I, and I think sometimes 
We are cheap dates. And the enemy knows that. The devil knows we're cheap. We sell out so cheap. It's amazing to me. Absolutely amazing. And yet here, here Satan has, has control of all the worldly goods as he presented that to Jesus himself. And Jesus didn't say, oh, no, you're not in control of that, Satan, not at all. You know, Jesus, hey, Jesus, I'll give you anything and everything in the, anything in the world. And Jesus didn't argue that. But, of course, Jesus, the Son of God, said, no, you know, you're gone. You're out of here. But yet Satan knows that we're cheap dates. We want instant gratification. When we see something, especially as Americans, we see something, I want that and I want it now. And Satan knows that. We are cheap dates. We're not loyal. We're rebellious. It's all about us. We're self-willed, each and every one of us. But yet these folks currently exist having hearts trained in covetous practices. That's all they know. That's all you and I knew before Christ. Our hearts were trained to be all about us. And we got really good at it. But thank, thank, thankful for the Lord. And here Balaam, he's no different, man. He, he was tempted by this money, but thankfully Balaam said, hey, whatever the Lord tells me, that's what I'm going to report. But the king of Moab, he didn't like that idea. He said, hey, up the ante. Bring him three more camel loads full of gold bullion. It'll change his mind. He's cheap. I can buy him out. Yeah, we're all cheap. And so Balak was saved by a talking mule. I mean, the only talking animal I know of is Mr. Ed, right? Everybody under 50, just ask your grandparents about Mr. Ed. They'll fill you in. But that's the only, <laughs> that's the only, that's the only talking four-legged animal I know of. But here, way back in, in Balaam's time, this donkey, this donkey is, is, is spoken of a dumb donkey. In other words, donkeys can't speak, so they're dumb. They're, they're dumb. You know, someone that can't speak, we, we've labeled them as dumb. That's the original, how the original word is used. Well, he's, you know, he's a, a deaf and a dumb mute. You know, he's deaf and he can't speak, so he's dumb. And so not that this animal was stupid, or not that this, this person that doesn't have any hearing is stupid. They're dumb. They just can't speak. And, and that's the description of unable to speak. And so this dumb donkey, this donkey that we all know can't speak except for Mr. Ed, this is not Mr. Ed. And so this donkey was dumb, but yet he spoke with a man's voice. Now you tell me that God isn't creative. And that dumb donkey all of a sudden came very articulate. He said, hey man, what are you doing? The angel of the Lord's about ready to take your head off. And you know what? If I'm riding, riding an animal and he starts talking to me, guess what I'm going to be listening to? Him. <laughs> you don't have to repeat that. You said it once, I got it. Wow, Lord, that's got to be you. And so thankfully, Balaam got the message, and his life was spared. His life was spared. So again, Numbers 22, take a look at that, 22 through 24. But Numbers 22, you get, you'll get the full bulk of it. And so these false prophets and things and people that are, are trying to be enticed, we're all trying to be enticed by something. All of us, we're all being tempted. Every one of us are being tempted. But these tempters, in verse 17, these tempters, they are, they are wells without water. Can you imagine being in the desert for four or five days without a drink, and all of a sudden you see a water well, and, man, you'd run up to that thing, and you'd drop that bucket down, and all of a sudden you just hear it hit the bottom, clunk, thud. No water in that well. Man, you'd be disappointed, wouldn't you? And so these tempters are, are wells without water. Oh, they're like empty clouds carried by a tempest. 
For whom? For the, these ungodly are reserved the blackness and darkness forever. Because God's holy. That's why. They're going to be in darkness and blackness forever. For when they speak great swelling words, when these ungodly godly folks speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lusts of the flesh. I know I don't have anything to offer, but I'm going to tempt you with the lust of the flesh. Oh, and that's when we get all weak need. Oh, wow, gee whiz, I can drive a car like that? Oh, okay. Oh, I can have a ministry like that? Hey, sure. I can go on the radio. I can this, that, or the other. Oh, wow. We get all weak need. But it's just emptiness. But yet, so the allure is through the lusts of the flesh. Through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. And so the, the young ones are, are being tempted. They've come and tasted and seen that the Lord is good, and then all of a sudden they're being tempted to get off track. While, they're prom while these young ones, these immature ones, are promised liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. For if, after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, if they, are again, if they again become entangled in them and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. The women's ministry through the leadership of Connie is going through the writings to the Hebrews, the, the book of Hebrews. And the writer of Hebrews is saying, hey, we no longer engage in physical sacrifices. Our sacrifice is the finished work of Jesus Christ. Amen. Done. I mean, that's simple to grasp. That's easy. We got it. But the Hebrew writer is writing to the Hebrew Christian who wanted to go back to the physical sacrifices. And the writer of Hebrews, and as the ladies, as you ladies have been, been, been sitting under this marvelous teaching, this book of Hebrews, we're realizing if we go back to the old ways, we are in big trouble. Big. It's blasphemy to say, well, the blood of Christ really is, it's just not enough. I need to add the blood of a bull. Mix it in with the blood of Jesus, right? That's what's going on. And that's what Peter's referring to here. Hey, those that have tasted and seen that the Lord is good, but go back to the old neighborhood. Oh man, the, their future life is not going to go well. And God is keeping great, a great scorecard. We've actually had people here saying that, oh, we need to come back to the to the sacrifices that was shut down immediately oh yeah we need to do that just as a memorial to the Lord as we spoke about at Ezekiel we're done with the physical sacrifices it's all about Jesus man period him and him alone not trying to be well let me show you how holy I am uh, I, I don't eat pepperoni anymore oh man I'm praying for you dude as I'm getting a double pepperoni delivered from pirate pizza this afternoon, and trust me, you don't get one slice. Not a one. <laughs> we've tasted and we've seen we're not going anywhere. We're going to sit under the authority of Jesus and under his leadership, not develop our own leadership and say, gee, this is what I'm going to do. That's not, that's not going to happen. God is not encouraging that we are creating that in our own lust-filled hearts. Oh, this is what the Lord wants me to do. Oh, the Lord wants me to divorce my spouse and go marry this person. Wrong. Wrong. No, oh, we've heard this. Sam and I, we've heard that. We've heard that. We've heard it. Oh, yeah, this is what God wants me to do because he wants me to have this great ministry with this other spirit-filled person. Well, <laughs> wrong. 
We put, we're putting all our, our money in this temporary world. That, that's another part of our problem. We're thinking this is it. This is not it at all. It's heaven. Invest in heaven. Forget about, you know, God will use you the way that he sees fit. Don't invent things to think that, oh, yeah, this is, what, this is from the Lord. It's not of the Lord, not even close. Oh, how dare you? You know, your, your discernment is off. Oh, okay, great. Catch you later. Because I know where you're gone shortly. You're gone. I get it. It's not my first rodeo. 30 years, man. 30 years. I always want to say I've seen it all. But each year sh- shows something new. I thought, wow. Okay. Let's hear it for year 31. <laughs> Go team. <laughs> But to have this great body of Christ in front of me today, I'm just overjoyed and overwhelmed with peace that passes all understanding. Our friends on the internet, what a joy. We've escaped the pollutions of the world. We've escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are no longer entangled by those lusts. Take an inventory. Are you entangled? Even though you're born again, are you entangled? Well, if you are, come up after, after church, after service for prayer. Let the Lord break those entanglements. Verse 21, as we close, for it would, be, it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it has happened to them according to the true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit. That's a nasty thought, isn't it? But it happens. And secondly, it's like a sow or a pig, having been washed, returns to wallowing in the mire. Thank you, the Apostle Peter, for writing to us today through the inspiration of God the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Why don't we sing the blessing? The Lord bless thee, the Lord bless thee and, keep thee. and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee. Let's try it again. The Lord bless thee. The Lord and keep thee the lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee and be gracious unto thee the lord lift up His countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. Hey, God bless you guys. Uh, Hope you have a wonderful rest of the day and uh, uh, we'll see you Wednesday night. God bless you. Hi, everybody. Pastor Greg, Calvary Chapel, Harupa Valley. Hey, we're so glad that you've been enjoying the videos, and we just know that God has been touching you and just giving you a blessing through these teachings. But, you know, we'd like to give you a challenge. Since this material is available, as you know, you can go to the website and pull these videos down, but we would like to challenge you. Since you're enjoying these teachings on a regular basis, we want to challenge you, why not share these videos. You've got lots of friends on Facebook and so forth and social media. Why not inject the gospel message, the Bible teachings of of the Lord into, into your share partners? It would be a great opportunity to maybe start a conversation, but we would really like you to be encouraged and consider passing these teachings on. We want people to be benefited, so let's allow the Lord to do what he would like to do. But in the meantime, we're so glad that you've been joining us and enjoying these teachings. They will continue to come as the Lord tarries. But again, enjoy, enjoy the Lord. Thank you so much, and continue to pray for Calvary Chapel here in the city of Harupa Valley. God bless you, Pastor Greg, once again, and we'll catch up with you next time. Have a great week in the Lord. Bye now.